smuggling of counterfeit goods do not only cost the government billions of shillings in tax revenue losses, but also exposes the public to unsafe products imported by unscrupulous networks of illicit traders. But in a country of fairly well-guarded borders, why is smuggling of goods across the border still possible? Well, Citizen TV's senior reporter Seth Olale spent months observing activities along the Kenya-Uganda border, where he witnessed how unsafe goods make their way to Kenya. Here's our special feature, Profit Without Borders. <laughs> is the Kenan border town of Busia. It is a busy border crossing, teeming with activity and the business of exports and imports. But not all that goes on here is legal. Illicit trade is a daily reality, and with it comes the movement of unsafe products, some that contain aflatoxins. Unapata complication ya tumbo. Tumbi inakuwa inakuwa na shida. Hii experience nimeshaiga hapo kwa kwa nyumba nishaikuwa nayo wakati mmoja baada kuna mafuta. Kawa ni ile watu wanaendesha. Sasa inabidi ukaenda hospitali unaulizwa ulitumia nini? Ukisema hii mafuta unaambia mafuta zingine kama hizo wachane nazo. The risk is high because these are not toxins that you joke with. They are toxins that cause cancer. And the fungus can produce the toxin at any time. Despite what looks like tight security along the border crossing, illicit trade is still booming here. <laughs> Kesh <laughs> is an issue we are aware of. Of course, I mean, aware we have illicit trade, there must be that element of corruption again with our security officers, some of them, but the majority are doing a good job. The country will likely experience a major spike in this uptick. This crackdown is therefore timely as it mitigates the potential harm wrought on our people by illicit brews and counterfeit alcohol that is mostly traded in non-compliant premises. Whether in broad daylight or under the cover of darkness, perpetrators of the illicit trade pursue profits aggressively, even if someone dies in the process. Another fatal accident happened right before our very eyes, this time involving a vehicle that was allegedly being used by a contraband smuggler. <laughs> And wana drive carelessly wana drive dangerous driving gari ilikuwa wish imemgonga na askari wako mume wangu amelala hapo chini hasa badala askari wanganganie kuponyesha mume wangu maisha hao nao walingangania kugard pombe nyilikuwa ndani ya wish ndio hapo maboda boda wakakasirika kabisa wengine wakakuja na kibriti ili wachome ili gari watoe hiyo pombe According to the Anti-Counterfeit Authority, the government is losing close to a trillion shillings annually as a result of illicit trade. Close to 800 billion worth of goods 
uh, are within the illicit bracket. And this one, uh, of course, uh, make the government to lose a lot of revenue. So there is a big loss to the economy, not just to KRA in terms of revenue. Because for us, in terms of revenue, of course, it is very little. But at the end of the day, the ripple effect is very huge. Ile <laughs> So kinaweza mafuta kama hizo unakupikia chakula unapata complication ya tumbo. Tumbo inakuwa inakuwa na shida. Hiyo experience nimeshaiga hapo kwa kwa nyumba nishaikuwa nayo wakati mmoja baada ya kuna mafuta. Kawa ni ile watu wanaendesha. Sasa ina vitu kendo sitadu unaulizo ulitumia nini? Ukisema hii mafuta unaambiwa mafuta zingine kama hizo waachane nazo. Anon to Rash Bashir and other residents who have been frequenting the Busia Referral Hospital as a result of terminal pains, some of the farm produce they have been consuming for decades contain deadly chemicals. We collected several samples of the agricultural produce and took them to a lab in Nairobi. So here are samples of peanuts that we are storing, then we want to test after that. Mm -hmm. And made samples also from different regions of the country. Uh, aflatoxin is a, a known plus one carcinogen. So it is known that it causes um, cancer and uh, fumonisins have also been uh, proven to, pro to cause esophageal cancer so these are but we have over 400 uh, mycotoxins. Busia has also recorded the high levels and I think it's because of the, uh, the, uh, the porous borders you have crops coming from across which are not transported well yeah, so long as you have a little rain on the crops or moisture collection, then it triggers the fungus to produce the toxins. Mi kama kazi wa busia mara mingi na nua njugu hizi kwa soko matope, ama hizi hapa tuma duka za karibu karibu hapa, lakini ni siku shuka mizi njugu ni nzuri ama ni mbaya, ndi tunazitumia tu, kwa zamu tunazinua sokoni. From the assorted food samples we collected along the Kenya-Uganda border counties of Busia and Bungoma that included maize, peanuts, sugar, beans, green grams, and tested at the University of Nairobi Mycotoxin Lab, peanuts had the highest amount of aflatoxins contamination with 11.3 parts per billion, contrast to the acceptable 10.0 limit, which is acceptable limit for total aflatoxin in maize and peanuts. Busia is a border point, so it's important that we have facilities there to be able to analyze for aflatoxin or mycotoxins at the border point, so that we don't let in what is contaminated. You know, for example, Uganda grows a lot of uh, peanuts. So as they bring their peanuts, what level of toxins are in the peanuts? And that need to be tested at the border point. We carried out uh, heavy metal analysis on uh, the sugar sample. Uh, heavy metals usually are metals whose densities are five grams per cubic centimeter and above. Yes. So uh, some of these metals usually when they 
get into your body, they bioaccumulate. They get in, but it is difficult for you to remove them. Mara mingi hata vyakula hivyo maduka hizi ambayo tunanunua kando na njugu kuna unaweza nunua bidhaa zingine dukani kama mafuta hivi na upate zina zina shida labda upande ya tumbo unapata tumbo na na kuwa na hali ya kuendesha. A number of residents claim they have been frequenting the Busia Referral Hospital as a result of consuming contraband food. Oh, yeah. Just for justice. Busia County Deputy Governor Arthur Odera admits that hygiene has been a challenge leading to increased risks of food contamination. Because of the porosity of the border, a lot of food will cross without the necessary testing and the necessary surveillance and the necessary checks. Also, if you, from an economic point of view, if you are seated if, if you farm like 20 kilometers from the next official border crossing point, it does not make economic sense for you to take your food to the border crossing point, have it tested and checked, and then bring it back just across the border to the next person to buy it. Therefore, one of the ways to do it is to establish more border points. Hygiene issues, uh, insecurity uh, matters that uh, uh, the county has to bear on behalf of the country. And therefore, as we do our budgeting, as we do our planning and interventions, I think the county of Busia deserves a lot of attention in terms of making sure that uh, uh, we, we, we protect the country, this being an outlet and an inlet as well, we protect the country in form of disease uh, by ensuring that surveillance, there is enough investment in surveillance. Because of lack of uh, standardization, one, we may not know the hygienic preparation uh, that those foods come along with. So some of the, uh, the foods that are eaten uh, directly may also have a negative effect uh, of causing other conditions like diarrheal diseases. But uh, the most serious one that uh, is uh, noted is uh, cereals, which can lead you to developing uh, cancer especially uh, liver cancer or hepatic uh, cellular carcinomas. So you find that because of this lack of uh, proper um, uh, assessment of these foods, our people are exposed uh, to those conditions. Small traders may, who move every day, who, they have a bunch of bananas, uh, they are able to move into Kenya, sell the bananas or a bunch of fruits. Uh, that is really a challenge, I'm sure, to the national government. Uh, these are small quantities, but they are also a danger. They can create an outbreak of a particular disease. In order to experience how some of the farm produce crossing the border into Kenya are handled from the point of origin to destination, we set out on a journey. Okay. To Bugiri District, Eastern Uganda. Sixty-two year old Justice Nabuira has been growing peanuts, sugarcane and pineapples for ten years for commercial purposes at his five acre plantation in Nabukali location, Bugiri District, Eastern Uganda. But the ever-growing demand for peanuts in neighboring Kenya means that Nabuira and many other farmers in this eastern part of Uganda must work to meet the demands. From now. Eastern Uganda's favorable climate has immensely contributed to both small and large-scale cultivation of peanuts and other agricultural products such as sugarcane, which is fairly at local factories producing sugar. Industrious, hospitable and respectful too. <laughs>
while sugarcane goes to the nearby factories. Most cereals such as peanuts head to the Kenya-Uganda border where business brokers and middlemen eagerly wait for the commodities. The business brokers are part of a well-connected illicit trade network that has for decades taken over operations along the Kenya-Uganda border, specifically in Busia and Bungoma counties. Once the brokers obtain the farm produce from transporters, they store them at various locations near the Kenya-Uganda border. From here, the brokers engage the cross-border network to transport the produce through non-gazetted entry points in order to avoid paying taxes to KRA and Uganda Customs Unit. It could take hours, days or weeks to guarantee safe passage. All the while, the cereals gather excess moisture that breeds bacteria due to poor storage. Once there is green light from the illicit trade network leaders to move the cereals across the border into Kenya, the goods are loaded into waiting cars, trucks, border border or bicycles, depending on the destination. The cereals are then sneaked into the country through the border Sofia, Marachi and Andugosi border crossing points. Here, cereals, alcoholic drinks, electronic products and cosmetics easily cross into Kenya as mainly steel metal gets out. Movement across the border is aided by the illicit trade network that allegedly includes Ugandan and Kenyan business brokers, police officers, KRA border control unit officers, and county government officials. This operative, only identified as Omosh, is an influential member of the illicit trade network. He strikes deals with the law enforcers to facilitate smuggled goods to cross the border. Omosh negotiates the prices and pays the police and county government officials in cash before movement can be allowed across the border. And he is not acting alone. Kevin, not his real name, worked closely with Omosh in the illicit trade business until a life-threatening incident changed his cause. Lakini likuwa kwa mundo ni Toyota Filda. Nilikuwa nimepewa ile pombe ya kutoka Uganda. Inaitwa Empire. Na Malailoni, Zipolitan Papers. Nilikuwa natoka semu ya busia na pereka jimbo la siya ya pali pala hitu andori. Na kuna iyo barabara kutoka busia adi unakukwenda uenyawe magari ndi wanao kupa mzigo ya deleva kuna wa vijana wa bajaji zibigibiki kwa kila senta wanawaangalilia barabara na polisi wako semu gani wewe ndio posa unapewa namba ya huyo mmoja atakuwa kuiwasiliana na wewe njoo pole pole hapa kuko hivi hapa kuko hivi Newton not his real identity was also a driver recruited by the illicit trade syndicate operating along the Kenya Uganda border Natoskari Uganda tunaleta Kenya tukileta Kenya tunapita Napita ya dongos, tunakuja, tunapita ya nasira. Kamu kwa napikipiku, napita ya nasira, unanguka nambali. Ukifika nambali, unalipa wa maskara, nambali ya wakubwa, nambali ya pesa. Ukisha wa lipa, tunapita ya tukienda. Na, ya? Tukipita, tukipita kwa wa maskara, nambali ya wa, tunalipa shilingi miambili kwa kila mtu. Saka kama tukwa watu, kama saba, tunalipa shilingi elefu moje, kitu elefu moje, miaine. Kunae mwenye atatumu wa peane polisi kitu, na sume namba ya gari. Gari takapuonekana, kile kizuizi kitaye kwa kando, kile kibamba, gari hilo, limpita. Pesa ngapu wanahonga na? Oh, ya tigemea umebeba nini? Ya tigemea umebeba nini? Na umepita marangapi? Maana unaeza toa elfu, unaeza toa miatana, ya tigemea na ule mzigu niyo kwa kwenye gari lako. 
ikuja mnapita hizo rutu za za ndani ndani mnapita kwa ngorom mnakuja mnaruka kwa lami mnaongea na sala kwa tunapeleka kama nilikuwa na pikipiki nilikuwa napeleka mahali naitwa Malanga nilikuwa napeleka hiyo mzigo huko hivyo lakini vile nilikuja nikabatika nikapata gari kuna mtu akaniambia akanipatia gari yake kumwendeshea kumbebeo mzigo sasa so, tunafika ngao kwa point kwa tunapewa tuna, unalipa gari huko inakuja na lori inakuja na mzigo inatupea hapo hivyo na sisi tunapakia tunaleta tunaleta huko tukipita kama hiyo tukipita nje ya Moromo tunaanguka kwa lami tunapita main ya hiyo lami ya kutoka Mias to Tubusia Heavy commercial vehicles including trucks are escorted by saloon cars across the border's border. We attempted to give chase to one of the mini trucks we spotted crossing into Kenya using the Abateba Dungosi road but the driver sped off. Marashi used to be notorious for smuggling. With the support of the government we have been able to manage that. Marashi is now not an issue. We have another called uh, there is another another town there a small town along the border which is notorious for that. And we also have another route which is also being abused heavily by the smugglers. Mm -hmm. It is called Adu, the Adugozi route. Mm -hmm. And along and, and along the Adugozi route we are putting an inland border to ensure that anybody who smuggles goods through the other places and is trying to use that route because it's a major route is also going to be intercepted and it, will, it is not something that is going to continue. Once the commodities cross over the no man's land and enter Kenya, they are escorted to secret rebugging stores situated in Marachi slums by a ferocious youth gang locally known as Jobless that controls any cargo movement in the area. This building that is still under construction acts as a warehouse for storing and repackaging illicit goods from Uganda. Posing as dealers, we used secret cameras to highlight how the illegal repackaging of illicit goods from Uganda, such as sugar, is done almost on a daily basis. The 50 kgs bags of various branded Ugandan sugar sacks are relabeled and repackaged into Kenyan branded sacks such as Nzoia and Transmara sugar. <laughs> the secret warehouses are guarded round the clock by the notorious jobless youth gang. The Marachi slums itself has for decades been a no-go zone for police officers from both Kenya and Uganda based in Busia. Some of the gang members are allegedly to be armed with firearms. Most semi-permanent structures in this slum act as transit stores for keeping illicit goods destined for western, Nyanza and Rift Valley regions. The jobless youth gang is dreaded here because of its ruthless ways. <laughs> Police officers from Busia Police Station, who attempted to carry out an operation aimed at flashing out illicit goods from the slum, were met with strong resistance from members of the jobless youth gang during the 2019 Jamhuri Day celebrations. Once repackaged into Kenyan brands, some goods are delivered at nearby retail shops and open cereals markets near the Kenya-Uganda border, while some head to more distant destinations. It's at such open-air markets where Bashir Were and other local residents buy the illicit produce. Kwa vitu vyenye tunanunua kama cereals, sana vitu mingi tunaleta vile vitu vyenye vimesha uh, tengeneso wa vimekauka hata njugu. Kuna tu baadhi ya mahali zenye zinatoka hasa zinatoka mahali tofauti kuna ile unapoleta inakata inaisaka wiki tatu inaisaka wiki mbili na kuna ile ukileta siku tatu inaribika lakini vitu zingine hasa kama mahindi maragwe ndenguni vitu vina kama ana vimehifadhiwa sawa local shopkeepers madenge and anita not their real names say they have been purchasing illicit commodities directly from members of the jobless youth gang based in Marachi slums in order to maximize on profits. Haikuchukua hata dakika 5 ukipiga mteja simu mwambie nataka sukari. 
how many bags itakuwa delivered kwa mlango kwa sukari ya Kenya kwanza yenye kupatikana ni ngumu ni vigumu tangu pata sukari tu ya Kenya hakuna na ukipata bei iko juu bei ya sukari iko juu na pia haifiki zile kilo ambazo zimeandikwa kwa gunia unapata gunia imeandikwa 50 kg ukienda kupima ni 45 ikijikaza sana ni 46 na ukinua sukari ya Uganda kama hii gunia hii gunia ukipata inaweza kuwa na sukari kilo 51 52 na bei yake iko kali iko cheap The command of the National Police Service admits receiving complaints against police officers over alleged links to the illicit trade but says it is investigating the allegations. The issue of uh, cross border illicit trade is also I mean is undoubtedly problem or challenge ever in the whole world but uh, we don't stop at that I mean uh, as we try to make sure that we secure and enhance surveillance along I mean, our common borders. So issues of cross-border illicit trade are issues we know they happen in some pocket areas, but we have really beefed up the security. We have strong multi-agency teams right now working in the western area, mobless roadblocks in most of those Panya routes or the cut lines. So it's an issue we are aware of. Of course, I mean, aware we have illicit trade, there must be that element of corruption again with our security officers, some of them, but the majority are doing a good job. Kila lalamishi ambaye naletwa, kwa hivyo, tunashukulikea ayo mambo, nataka ni kwa kikishie, hatu taruzu, hali yeyote ambaye ya ayambatani na malengo na matakwa yetu, kama sarekali, yule ambaye ataku funja utaratibu ama kanuni mbazo simewekwa basa atachukuliwa seria hakuna uh, ila taepa Joseph Kaguru Deputy Commissioner in Charge of Kenya Revenue Authority Border and Control Unit denies that KRA surveillance officers at the Busia and Bungoma borders are compromised to tackle the illicit border trade KRA has done so much to address the issues of corruption mm. and as you are aware by now we have already, as, a, as an authority, uh, we have our, a department that deals with integrity issues across the authority. In addition to that, we have, the, the Kenya Revenue Authority has installed the eye whistle, what we call the eye whistle, where you can report corruption cases anonymously. You ca you'll not be known. In addition to that, KRA pays up to 5% of the money recovered if you report corruption related cases the illicit trade business along the Kenya Uganda border not only thrives on land but water as well the Luahaha river which borders Kenya and Uganda in Bungoma County is also another strategic route being exploited by the illicit trade cartel. The other side of the river is Luahaha, Uganda. It doesn't take long before an illicit trade operative swings into action. Along the way, he notices we have spotted him and backs off, then later resumes the operation. The man made at least two trips across the river during our six hours wait. The alcohol was delivered at a nearby bar. Bungoma Governor Kenneth Lusaka says that Luahaha Pora's border poses a real risk to the health and economic growth of the county. We need to build capacity of our police station. As, as we speak now, we only have a police post which is not properly uh, manned. It uh, is, is, is not... Uh, properly equipped. So we need actually to have a fully fledged police station there uh, with all equipment, with everything that uh, can assist in um, uh, dealing with the illicit, uh, illicit uh, business. Number three, we need a fully fledged immigration 
uh, office. As it is now, it's being handled by customs. From Luakaha, Bungoma, we return to Busia County, but this time head south to Budalangi. where Port Victoria is a source of livelihoods for fishermen, but at the same time, an endangered zone for illicit trade. <laughs> Mrs. TV is the chairman of the Marenga Omena PMU Beach section of Port Victoria, where some 1,600 small traders, including boat owners, source for income from Lake Victoria. <laughs> But lately, he says, there has been a challenge regulating movement of goods and people entering Kenya from neighboring Uganda. Ngino napata waganda wamekuja wengi, ama saa zingino mejo kukwetu, waganda saa zingino wakipata mziba kuwa wanakuja wanaleta kukwetu kwa mochari. Asa napata saa zingino wanatoka kukua bila life jackets wakifika huku, wana, wana life jackets pengine Coast Guard wanawashika, hizo ndo changamoto pengine Coast Guard wanapitia. Alafu pia... Visa za uizi katika kwa maji. Unapata pengine Coast Guard wa, wa pengine wamefanya tripu mchana na usiku hawako kwa maji. Unapatikana uizi nafanyika kwa maji usiku. Ambapo tunapigia simu wanaenda kwa haraka ndiyo. Naki unapata za zingine unapata kama wale wa hizi wamesha kimbia. Wamesha kimbia. Failure by the Port Victoria Coast Guard to conduct night patrols along the Kenya-Uganda border in Lake Victoria is a blessing for the illicit trade operatives who make a kill by avoiding KRA Customs Unit. Once commodities arrive here from Uganda, they are ferried to various destinations in western region depending on the customer's demand. <laughs> Apart from regulating trade and transport at Port Victoria, residents here are grappling with another challenge, sanitation. <laughs> and with the nationwide outbreak of cholera still very active, thousands here in Budalangi could be at risk of contracting the disease. As residents retreat to their houses, fishermen embark on a night-long fishing expedition on the lake, and we return to our base in Busia. On our trip to Busia town, we encounter an accident scene. <laughs> Another fatal accident happened right before our very eyes, this time involving a vehicle that was allegedly being used by a contraband smuggler. Hali ambayo tunapitiamo na kilio chenye tunalia kila siku Magendo Haya magari anayo pita wapa usiku na mchana serekali njini muna usika na ayo Kwa sababu magendo kaya ya kipita njindo muna kwe skoti nyuma Ya natuwa na baadaye mnakuja kubeba miili kwa body bag kupeleka. Niko na uchungu na uchungu wangu nalekeza kwa serikali ya Busia. Kwa nini serikali ya Busia polisi county commander wa Busia anaruhusu gari za magendo kukimbia kwa hii barabara na sisi barabara ni tunafuatwa sana. Kwa serikali yetu ya Busia wanakula na watu wa magendo kama wako kando wanasikia na inawauma na wengine mali ni yao wewe unakimbiza gari mbio na hakuna mtu anakufukuza unakuja unagonga mtu mara kwa mara tunakota watu chuda hapa usiku atujui ni nini imefanyika na ni watu wa nini watu wa magendo sisi tumechoka na maneno hapa tunakona ya ajali kila siku hapa mekua salika raundi tu. Sao raundi wani pale otimonga hapa ni raundi tu. Una wa maskero na kika tukukimbile.
kuchukua mambo ya bangi, mambo ya changa. Lakini mambo ajali wataka kushughulikia au ni akina nani? Wanataka tu hongo 24/7. Au ni akina nani? Mara kwa 2020. Hele 2020 hufanyia nini? Mimi ninaongea kama mama ambaye niko na uzito. Waskaru maskaru wametuchokesha. Ikiwa ni magendo inatoka buzia, shikieni buzia. Muache kufukuza magendo kutoka buzia, mnakuja kushikia hapa tangakona mnagonga watu. Wana escort, wana escort magendo na wanajifanya wanakipika magendo. Hiyo hatutaki. Kani kwa escort magendo wa escort magendo. Constant danger attends to the illicit trade. In the past two years alone, Busia residents claim that over 20 residents have lost their lives as a result of fatal accidents caused by speeding illicit trade operatives. Uh, just to appeal to Kenyans um, to cooperate with the police, yeah, we're there for them and uh, let them come to us when they have issues, let them have confidence that you shall attend to them and wherever they have problems, let them try to reach up to us so that we can see how we can tackle their issues and we thank them for their cooperation. The crackdown exercise is therefore not a fight against alcohol but a fight against illegal trade in alcohol which is detrimental to public health and security of the nation. However, the illicit trade continues to put lives at risk and undermine public health and national security. Nikapata sim and no number. Mwenda kani pigia kani uliza We ni baba ya prifa E keso dongo Ni kazema Ndiyo Lakini wakati uliza mwe wangi tistuka Ni kazema ndiyo Akazema mepata akizitenda hapa kwa taraja Ya walazi taraja mbili hapa Kidogo mungina kapika simu Akazema Mutoto wa ndugu yangu ati preva megongwa na tuko tunapeleka stali hospital na mbali ah uh, but msuri kijana mwingine wa ndugu yangu akakuja haraka na gari wakaanikuwa na bambaika kupata gari haka tuchukua tukaenda na mbali nikafika kwa scene nikaona damu imemwagika kwa dracha hapo mingi sana Uh, nikafata Sterling kufika Sterling wakasema wakumuhudumia Frida alikuwa taa yetu katika boma hii mtoto aliponiambia mama ninataka kurudi kuja kujenga nilishukuru akaniambia mama nakuja kujenga ndio nikuletee mgeni alikuwa baada ya jawa sasa alikuwa ameniagiza January analeta mgeni Nikashukuru. Tumepotesa na tumepotesa pakubwa. Ni pengo kubwa aliweze kusipika only that what we demand and uh, we are crying for na haki itendeke. Sababu hiyo mtu alikuwa amebeba sukari imejaa kwa probox. Ai. Ni ngumu lakini the Dajajambili black spot here in Nambale is a strategic getaway point for contraband smugglers as it connects Busia counties to destinations such as Kakamega, Mumias and Bungoma. Nilipofika saa 12:30 nilipigiwa simu na shemeji yangu akaniambia uko wapi nikamwambia eh mimi siko kwa boma nimeenda kwa kikundi cha wamama akaniambia harakisha ndugu wangu amegongwa nikamwambia eh 
nilichukua ndugu wako peleke hospitali nipate hospitali hakika niliharakisha nikafika pale nikapata gari ilikuwa wish imemgonga na askari wako mume wangu amelala hapo chini hasa balala askari wanganganie kuponyesha mume wangu maisha hao nao walingangania kugard pombe nilikuwa ndani ya wish ndio hapo maboda boda wakakasirika kabisa wengine wakakuja na kibriti ili wachome ili gari watoe hiyo pombe askari walipoona maboda wameja hapo hivyo waliogopa sasa ndio lori ikakuja wakamweka ndani tukampeleka hospitali Agnes Odongo is still struggling to come to terms with the death of her daughter Batila Odongo who together with her husband Geoffrey Omondi were killed instantly by a speeding vehicle that was suspected to be failing sugar from Uganda walikuwa wanatoka kwa shughuli zao za kazi wanarudi nyumbani saa 11 walegongwa na gari ya magendo na wakakufa wote ya couple wakawacha watoto wadogo watatu in nambale busia county the funeral service of 15 year old pauline orodi is underway kama unajua wewe ni mwenyeji na umekalia kitu the late pauline was a class 7 pupil at nambale ac primary school whose life was cut short by a reckless speeding private car smuggling sugar from uganda near nambale town The loss and trauma inflicted on those who stand on the way of the illicit trade network grows day by day. Other than the health and security concerns, the black market trade is costing the country billions of shillings in revenue. Dr. Robi Mbugua is the executive director of the Anti-Counterfeit Authority. Per year we are losing close to 800 billion Kenya shillings that including counterfeiting and other forms of illicit trade and that is one of the mandate of ACA is to advise the government on the menace and how that one can be dealt with According to a survey report released by the Anti Counterfeit Authority the total value of illicit trade increased from 726 billion shillings in 2017 to 826 billion in 2018 sectors registering significant increase in the magnitude of illicit trade from 2017 to 2018 were chemical and allied with 2.8 billion shillings food beverages and non alcoholic drinks valued at 7.92 billion shillings plastics and rubber at 10.62 billion and building mining and construction worth 73.36 billion shillings Nairobi and Mombasa were the leading hotspot counterfeit counties with 91% and 50% respectively while Migori, Busia and Narok were the least with 23% from the consumer survey the level of public awareness on matters of illicit trade stood at 64.14% with that of counterfeiting at 66% as at 2019 the report also established that Kenya lost 153.1 billion shillings in government revenue to illicit trade in 2018 which was an increase from 129.72 billion in 2017 Our essence is to stop this at the source so that they the counterfeited goods do not, do not get into the country. If you you register with us, we know what is original and where it is coming from. So any other person purporting either to produce a similar product, we are able to identify them and deal with them according to the law. Weaknesses of national regulatory regimes and global financial and transportation systems facilitate illicit trade. It's bringing together uh, major problems in the area in the region. Uh, extremist and including terrorist groups, criminal organizations and and corruption and the the element that binds all these things together is illicit trade 
but help is on the way. The Kenya Revenue Authority has invested billions of shillings putting up this command center located at its Times Towers headquarters in Nairobi in a bid to end the illicit border trade. If the Ugandan government protects Nabwira and other local farmers from profit-thirsty brokers and middlemen, from exploitation and mishandling of agricultural products along the border, then the country's agricultural sector will achieve its maximum potential. If the relevant Kenyan government agencies ensure that imported products meet the required health standards, then small traders along the Kenya-Uganda border will make a living out of their produce without fears of causing diseases to Kenyans as a result of food contamination. There's no doubt that the Kenya-Uganda one border point in Busia County provides immense trading opportunities for residents here. However, if proper regulations are not put in place to guarantee food safety, then it's just a matter of when and not if before disaster strikes here. Seth Olale, Citizen TV, Busia County.